What's up guys, we are back here in the Parker Performance Laboratory today and we are bringing you another piece of our top five EcoBoost modifications. This is the UPR dual valve catch can. You know that we promote this. If you're one of our customers, we've told you not to buy any other catch cans on the market, just to buy this one. This is good for all your bolt-on cars up until you start getting into the big turbo arena uh, where you start needing to have uh, some crankcase pressure built, uh, vented rather. And what we wind up doing then is we run the EMS vented uh, catch can or sometimes even UPR makes a vent to atmosphere catch can that we've ran as well. But anyway, prior to that, all the way up through your full bolt-ons, NX2s, um, stuff like that on a stock motor, stock turbo, NX2, bolt-on, full bolt-on, whatever. This is the unit we use till about that 550-ish horsepower number, 500, 550, somewhere in there. Uh, at that point, we start to overpower the, the dual valve catch can and we start to make the change to the VTAs. But this is the unit for all other instances. It is the best unit on the market. It is sleek, it's fit, it fits perfect. It's got the largest canister. Um, you don't have to worry about changing it every oil change. Some of the other ones that are on the market are small. They fill up quickly, this kind of stuff. Some of them don't even work. They don't even collect anything. So this is the trick. We're gonna install this canister today. It comes with one single canister and three lines. Two of your lines are gonna have check valves. You always need to make sure that your check valves are running away from your catch can. Um, and you only need a handful of tools. You need basically a flathead screwdriver with some good length, a trim removal tool, um, a 10 millimeter and a 532nd Allen key um, and an eight millimeter socket as well. A couple zip ties to put the lines in place and that's it. All right, so we're gonna start by mounting the catch can itself. Uh, you wanna make sure that the orientation is you have two lines going towards the rear and one line going towards the front. The front line is gonna receive the long uh, line that's gonna have the check valve in it. That's gonna go to your intake manifold on the front side and we wrap that to where it kind of routes across here underneath through the intake and over to your charge pipe and in. Um, so that's the front line. The back line is gonna get your short line that has the check valve and that's gonna connect to your air intake right in front of your turbocharger. You'll have a coupler there. And then the top one is gonna go around the back of the motor and actually connect to the PCV plate. So this car is an 18 up. The 18 ups, you will run into some fitment uh, interference from time to time with these AC lines. This canister does mount right here below that ground bolt, which we're gonna remove and we're gonna go ahead and do that. And what happens sometimes is the bottom of the canister, if you'll tink tink, you can kind of hear, the bottom of the canister will sometimes interfere with that line. The lines coming up will sometimes interfere with this line. So what we do in that instance is we take our 530 seconds Allen key and we're gonna loosen these two um, button heads on the top. And by loosening those two button heads, we're gonna have the ability to swivel the catch can's orientation. But we're not gonna mess with that just yet. We're gonna wait until we have this installed and then we're gonna do that based on fitment and then we'll move it back in place and tighten those at the end. So we're gonna start by removing the eight millimeter ground bolt. UPR provides you with a nut and bolt combo. This has also got two washers on it. These are 10 millimeter. And depending on your tool selection and what you've got, um, I find it sometimes easiest to come in from the bottom and thread that into through the bottom like that, or sometimes going in through the top. Just depends on what your tool selection is and what's available to you. Um, you know, if you have the ability to use, like we have these ratcheting wrenches like this, these are lifesaver in small tight instances like this. Um, so it just depends on what you've got available to you. Now one thing that I'll note is uh, the ground strap goes on the top side of your UPR catch can armature here. And so you're gonna slide that through and then go ahead and place your new hardware. Maybe if it starts. There we go. All right, so then we're gonna swap over to the 10 mil from the factory eight mil. And we're gonna run that sucker down a little bit. Okay. And so we've got the washer on the top there. We've got the 
bolt all the way through and then we can run our washer and nut through the bottom here. Okay, so in this instance, the bolt isn't quite long enough to go all the way through the factory nut sir, on the bottom. Um, so you don't even have to re-secure the bottom section there. In the event that this end, uh, doesn't work for you, we have used just the factory eight mil with no issues whatsoever as well. Um, but either way, this is good. So we went in from the top in this instance, used the washer. Um, there isn't enough protruding on the bottom to use the washer and the nut, and it is fastened tightly. So you're gonna be good to go either way. Um, so now we're gonna work on that interference that I mentioned, where we may have some fitment issues once we start running our lines. So we're just gonna loosen these two 532nd button heads here. So that way it's nice and loose. That way from here, we have the ability to rotate our catch can as needed. Um, from here, we're just gonna run the lines. And then basically we have to fight with removing the factory PCV crossover line that goes from the PCV plate into the intake manifold. And we'll show you that next. Okay, so your PCV connection here at the intake manifold, it has a one single large white clip. Um, you do need to take into consideration the location of your sensor here to your fuel rail pressure sensor. Um, do not damage these three lines or your vehicle will not start. So make sure to take care of that. All we're working here is we're working with a large flathead screwdriver. Our goal is to depress this white clip and we want to do so in a manner that allows me to then come in behind it and I use my trim removal tool to once it's depressed and try and slide that feller off and now she should be full clear full free for me to remove without having damaged anything okay so while you're up top make sure you install your canister make sure you tighten your bolt make sure you put your ground strap up top Make sure you release this front um, intake manifold uh, PCV crossover line. You want to remove that here. And then before you go underneath the car to, re to remove that last piece of the PCV that actually attaches to the PCV plate, you can go ahead and run the lines as well while you're up top. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now as well. For starters, we'll start with the one that is the shortest. This is the one that goes from your catch can to your coupler on, on the air intake. Again, make sure that your check valves are always running away from your catch can. In this instance, we've kind of done some video magic because we worked on this car yesterday and we've already installed our UPR coupler. And the one thing that I wanted to share with you guys when installing this UPR coupler is the orientation. You need to have it clear your boost reference lines here that come into your wastegate and also to the turbocharger compressor, but you also need to have it be uh, accessible for your reach of the canister. So we're gonna make sure our line runs away from there. We're gonna grab that boost line there. And then we're gonna shove this little feller all the way down into her home. And we should be able to reach that and it shouldn't interfere with anything. Like a so, bada bing, bada boom. So you are attached here at your canister. Your check valve is running away from the catch can as seen there. And you are installed here on your coupler. Okay, so the second line we're gonna use is the other one with the check valve. Again, you're making sure that your check valve runs away from the catch can. This is gonna be the longest line in the kit and you're gonna plug this one into your front line here of your canister. And again, my, my concept here is to try and keep things OEM plus. So try and run it along these two lines here for your AC. I end up coming back through there and zip tying it into place. Then run it underneath your coolant pass over here, down through the backside of your air intake and then we have one more spot that we zip tie. I will loosen this clamp right here. I will run a zip tie underneath this clamp to hold this in place so that it doesn't have the ability to move and swing and hit any of your pulleys or accessories. Now we're not worrying about installing this on the front barb here right now because we've got to go underneath the car still and remove that line off the back of the PCV. Once you're able to remove that line, the front will come out and you'll have access to slide this in. Okay, and then the third and final line you're gonna install is the other long line that does not have a check valve. Uh, a couple things to note here, they are different fittings. There's only one fitting that will fit your PCV plate and only one fitting that'll fit your catch can appropriately. So in this instance, we have a straight line fitting here and then a 90 degree fitting here. The straight line fitting is the one we're gonna install on the catch can and then the 90 degree fitting is the one that's gonna install on the PCV plate. Before we get underneath the car to remove that final line so that we can actually install our pieces onto the car, um, we're actually gonna kind of route this. And the reason I'm doing this in advance is so that I could teach you guys one trick that we've seen as a problem with customers have installed their own lines. 
do not allow this to droop or drape and run onto your downpipe. You want to run this kind of up and over the back side here. Um, you're going to go right on behind the motor. You're going to run it on the top side, basically. You don't want it to droop and, and fall down onto the downpipe because it will damage, obviously, the line. So we're going to go ahead and snake this through. And if you just kind of follow me, we'll go ahead and get that done for you now. Okay. Once that's kind of draped through, we're gonna go up with the car in this instance because we have it on a lift. If you're at home and doing this, the one trick I'll tell you is lift the car at the pinch rail, put one jack stand underneath the, uh, the pinch rail, like just below where the mirror location is. And if you get the car high enough there, you can slide in behind there, go underneath the car and reach your hand straight up into the same area that we're gonna be working on here on the lift. Um, I've done this for years without a lift and literally that's the best way to go about it is get the car high enough on the one side put the one jack stand in you want it kind of be like in the location of the mirror because um, if you go too far back the car won't be high enough if you go too far forward you won't be able to sneak your body up in there um, so I like to try and sneak in between the tire and the jack stand there go in underneath the car wiggle my body to where I can reach straight up in there and then you'll see when we're underneath there you only have one clip to remove it is an identical clip to the one that we removed here on the front on the intake manifold, um, but this one you're able to get a full grab on and you don't need any tools to do so. All right, for the sake of movie magic here, guys, uh, it's very difficult to get a camera in underneath the intake manifold to show you how you're gonna install that. So what we've done is we've pulled one of our PCVs out of the back of the shop here. This is actually a gutted PCV. By the way, if you want to hire us to gut your PCV and ship you one, um, it just is a couple bucks more than the cost of a stock PCV. We will get it OEM from Ford, we will gut it, and we will ship it to you gutted, ready for install. In this instance though, um, what I want you to know is that this is the piece that was going to the intake manifold part, um, whereas this is the piece that was actually on the um, PCV plate here. And so what's important and what I want to show you is this, this is still the same exact white fitting that we did where we're depressing that like we did on the front on the intake piece. But if it's pulled out and you try to do this, it won't work, it it'll jam up on you. So you wanna make sure that while you're grabbing it, push it all the way in, then depress, then remove, and it comes right off. Otherwise, if it's buried up against the stopper and you're trying to depress this, when you're trying to depress this, it actually buries itself into the stopper and it gets caught up and it bites you and it won't come off. So just breathe, push forward, depress, remove. All right, we've got all of our goodies installed. Our canister is installed, all of our lines are ran. Now, the only thing we have to do that we've removed that line is we have to go back up top, install the front line, um, and we have to tighten that one last zip tie and, and cut it. And while we're underneath the car, we're gonna go ahead and button up that last line to the PCV. I don't think I need to show you that. It literally just clips on and goes, and then we'll show you the finished product. Three, two, one. All right, so back up top for finishing touches. Now that you've removed your line, you could slide your hand here and when you go to sticking your line in, you wanna make sure that the orientation of your uh, clip is facing you like this, so that you can slide it underneath the tensioner pulley here, and then you're gonna grab a hold of the intake manifold right there, and then just grab it and pull it in. If we can listen for the click. Sometimes I have to use a screwdriver there it goes i was able to get it this time without a screwdriver oftentimes if you can't get your fingers on it you can get a little flathead screwdriver on the back again all the while making sure that you're not damaging those three wires that go to your fuel rail pressure sensor once that's in place we're going to secure this line with the zip tie that i've pre-installed underneath the clamp right here on our charge pipe and again this is the last zip tie here that just helps keep this from not hitting any of your accessory pulleys and then we'll trim it Okay, and then from there, your final step of the install at this point is just to make sure that you don't have any interference or fitment issues with your canister, with your lines, with them interfering with your AC lines and anything like that. In the event that you do, as I mentioned earlier in the video, you're gonna use your 530 seconds to loosen these button heads. You're gonna manipulate the positioning of the catch can and then secure the button heads. Just like that, your UPR dual valve catch can is installed. Hopefully you guys found this video helpful. As always, if we can help you purchase parts or find uh, installation help, 
Let us know. We're here to help. Sales at pp-fl.com, www.pp-fl.com. We'll see you guys soon.